I have this. I ha- I want to start this with with uh, Des. The conversation you and I were having a little bit earlier today. Hello, Desmond. Um, and we can get Des involved in this conversation as well. Todd walks in today, and he says, "Well, what are you all dressed up for?" I'm like, "I'm not. I got a white shirt on." But you noticed something. I mean, it was it was the white shirt. I'm assuming was it. Is that it what was it was? That it's a button-up collared shirt. Okay, it's not a t-shirt or a pullover. Well, I do wear. This is not the first time. You know, I don't even think it's the first time this week. I think yesterday I wore a button-down. Um, I wear them fairly frequently. Now, now I wear t-shirts and sweatshirts more. I mean, so, but you know, I would say thirty to forty percent of the time, I'm you know I'm wearing a button-down shirt. Well, that got me thinking. Do people real? Do people? Uh, do they notice other people's attire? They notice other people's attire because I because this is what I did subconsciously. The reason I wore this white shirt today was because I looked in my closet and I got a lot of dark stuff. You know, I'm trying to hide the fat. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna wear white today, and I know that's part of the reason you noticed it. But. So, I mean, do, is everybody noticing my attire every day? How does that work? Do we all notice each other's attire? Because I'm going to be honest, I don't, I don't think I notice it from anybody. Am I, the, am I in the majority or the minority when I say that? I would say you're in the – you're saying that you don't notice? I, I don't think notice. The majority. Like, I don't notice anything anybody else has on unless you're going to dress up like with a suit and tie and go, oh, look at you. Like, unless that's the case, I don't ever notice it. I'll notice a haircut. But I don't think, like, I I guess that's my thing. Like, I I don't know. I Never do I notice what you got on, Todd. Now, unless when you wear those, the stupid Manchester City scarf or whatever. It's what not about, stupid. It is stupid. What European about? European champions. So he champions noticed. Champions League today, by the way. So he noticed. Save, save it for your 10 seconds. Sorry. So, um. <laughs> Do you notice what people wear on a daily basis? Uh, yeah. I do, do you? Yeah. How many people you think do? I think like, quite, a, quite a bit. Do you come in and go, man, Todd wore that last week? You do, don't you? Who, me? Yeah. No. I don't, I don't think I get that into it. Is it more what the opposite sex wears? Let's be honest. No, I just think that I'm, I feel like I'm observant enough to, like, you know, you see something. I think you live in two different worlds. You see something, you'll go, Really? <laughs> they weren't that, or you like, you know, that's pretty cool again. You know, I like that. I like this. I like that. You know, I, I, that's that's kind of the whole way I look at it. You know, not to judge people, but you kind of you like, know what you know what it is. I think that you have a reaction to fashion. Yeah, just I would in say, general, right? Yeah. That's part yeah. of it. It's all everything's either good or bad to you. Yeah, questionable. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of gray area and, and to Zach yeah. and I it's just shades. oh he's got clothes on he's got clothes yeah, on I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess that's probably the scale he's not naked, that's so probably the scale we're all working on the more into fashion you are the more you notice other people's clothes the less into fashion you are the less you notice other people's clothes I just realized I got a lot of blue and black shirts and I just I, I thought you know what today I'm just gonna wear a white one yeah. Like I'm tired of wearing the blue. I'm the same way, man. I mean, if you see me, a lot of times I'm in, you know, black and gray. Or I don't wear white a ton. Yeah. Um, you know, I just why not? I know I just like well, one. I, I every time I put you on something white, good I, in it? I get it dirty. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, you are a right? painter. Get, yeah, yeah, that's I get true. It dirty. I get it dirty all the time. Even like I, like I drink coffee and you know just talking and you go to drink some coffee and just like a little splatter and that bugs me so oh, much. The worst with the white the t-shirt hell is the underarm stain, the stain that you get from sweat. Sweating. Oh, yeah, that's who's the well, worst? Wait, I, I, I don't know how that works though. I mean, wash your shirt. I take white. No, t- but I mean, it doesn't I bring matter. Two white if, tees. I always, if I'm wearing a white tee, I put another in the car. It's, I, I mean, I've never had. I've never had an armpit stain well, in a white shirt. Well, you've never been an athlete, but it never. <laughs> <laughs> It never happens to me now because, uh, let's face it, I live life pretty sedentary. I don't move a whole lot. <laughs> you don't say. But, but when I played sports, all of my white t-shirts had that stain oh, underneath wash them. wash your shirts. Well, no, you do wash them, but it's from sweat. And also, especially if you play football, the pads and the straps go across there. And the longer you, ke- and the longer you keep them. The longer yeah, you keep them I mean, fr- then yeah. throw out the shirt. 
Yeah, white tees. You got to get. I mean, I was. No, I was but like they're that lucky too. though. I was like that too. I had. I had <laughs> those same lucky. t-shirts. I mean, I, but you know, the longer you keep them, um, you know, the more stained up they get, and it's hard to get out. All right. Were you a t-shirt under the jersey guy or nothing under the jersey? Nothing. I couldn't do the t-shirt. I mean, there was times we did it because we did it as a team, but I, I just didn't like anything else. I mean, least amount of fabric better for me. Yeah, I had yeah. to do it. Free. I mean, well, be, I was be fat, free. so it was a better look But I couldn't wear jocks. Like, I hated jock straps. Yeah, I couldn't I do that either. Worse. So, okay, then let me ask you this then. The last few years we've seen NBA go to these sleeved jerseys. Yeah, would you have hated those? That's horrible. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have liked those at all. I just think the stack. <laughs> I mean, it's a, there's a tradition in the game, and there's some evolution as well. But I try to explain on, to man. people, and and you know, I'm not. It's not like I'm some high level basketball player. But when you shoot, it feels different if you have a sleeve on at your yeah. shoulder. It feels yeah, constrictive. It yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some, I mean, you know, some sometimes you're you're so hyper focused that it doesn't really matter. It's like the, the white noise of the crowd in the background. But I would have. I mean, I just yeah, that would have bugged me. That would have totally bugged me. T-shirt talk with Desmond Mason <laughs> on 107.7 The Franchise. So how are you doing? Is there anything at the top of your mind? What, 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 maybe maybe we should just open this up to whatever Desmond Mason wants to talk about to start things. Well, I'm happy I, I, I hired a guy um, this week. And, uh, you know, obviously art is my life, man. So I, I hired a guy this week named David Dean. He's um, extremely talented. You know, he writes for MTV News and, you know, relationships with Esquire and Art News and oh, you know, you've so got a, on and so forth. It's a PR guy, so, huh? No, he's not PR, actually. He's going to run my gallery. Oh. Um, he's going to be my art director. So he's basically attacked my social media, kind of, you know, told me. We sat down and had a conversation, and the conversation was talk about all this artsy stuff and all these things we're going to do and this huge push we're about to have here really soon. And before you know it, I'm talking to this guy about algorithms and Google and like I mean he's very very talented. So uh, SEO. Yeah, he's good, man. So he's search uh, engine optimization. He's a- <laughs> See, you guys know too much about that. Yeah. But yeah, no, he's good, man. So we started. He started a new Instagram. I was going. I was going. This is like I don't. I never do this, but he started a new Instagram. I have two Instagrams now: Twitter, Tumblr. Um, he's starting Facebook and trying to get rid of all the fake Facebook accounts, but. Um, it's called Be Different Art, and it's basically the evolution of um, my art now going forward. And it's, it's solely for creativity purposes. Look so, at you. That's awesome. Yeah, Good man. for I'm, you, I'm man. So I'm, really, I'm really pumped, you know, but to go through the negotiation process of salary and yeah, um, yeah. and job descriptions. And, you know, I, I did it myself, so I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself a little bit. Oh, it did you now? Move. Yeah, it did was a big now? move. Yep. It so you, move. you think you? Ca- I guess you thought you thought you came to a fair agreement. No, we we totally did, and he was all for it, man. He's just he's been to he's lived in a lot of different cities. He just moved back. He's from here, but he lived in New York for quite a while and, and did a bunch of writing. And so uh, he he moved back, and he's been impactful in every city he's ever been. Start did some startup fashion stuff. Did some startup businesses. Um, done tons of managed galleries. Done tons of uh, fashion shows, and so um. Now he wants to do something impactful in Oklahoma City, and and he felt like I was heading in the same direction as he was. So he approached me, and and um, you know, you, you jump all over that oh, when someone like him. You. Well, when yeah. you when somebody like that comes into the picture, you got you got to get them. Oh yeah, yeah. it doesn't happen. That sounds like a salesman too. Nah, well, I mean, I, I I'm a good reader of people. There you go. So I yeah. If I felt wrong, if I felt wrong about it, I would have told him to kick rocks pretty quickly. Why don't, why don't you? Uh, if you're a good reader of people, why don't you give us give everybody publicly a good read of me and Todd. Um, Get, let's do Todd because that's we'll, we'll start. We'll start with Todd. Uh, my, what are we doing? I'm sorry, on, I was listening. Just, <laughs> my my feel on Todd. Uh, good guy, obviously. I wouldn't, um, and I, I felt otherwise. No, no, I would say it. He's so already longer. Long 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 I will Tell elaborate. The truth. Come on, he's uh, a bad no, guy. really good guy. I think Todd's really fun to be around, outgoing. Um, but you know, when I when I disengage with him here in the studio, I feel like he's he's a helper. You know, he's a guy that's. Um, you know, if he can help fix it, he'll try to fix it. And if he can't, he'll try to help solve, at least try to help you find a way to solve it. Um, you know, I feel like, personal, I feel like Todd um, has thick skin, but he's pretty sensitive as well. Ah, I agree with that. I agree oh, yeah, with no that. No doubt. Um, he but, did, like, hey, man, look. I was the kid that cried when I got called fat in elementary school. I'm, I'm okay. Hey, look, hey, look, I, look. Hey, look. I, and and I'm, look, I used to be, I mean, I, I find myself now really not caring but i i was sensitive for a long time now i, I almost take it as maybe it maybe it does count as sensitivity i i don't know um you guys can define it if you want to but now i almost look at it as a badge of honor like at least you are responding 
Like, at least I have got you to respond. So, to me, it ends up being a net positive. Well, I think that uh, everyone walks the fine line, especially in this business, of wanting everyone to like you, but at the same time wanting to have a, a strong opinion about things. Right. I used to be wanting to got, wanting everybody to like me. I swear to you. I, I mean, I definitely used to be that guy. Now I'm like, so long as I get a reaction, reaction from you, Twitter guy and text guy and phone call guy equals paycheck from them. And the other thing, so too, now that, I'm like, okay, I'm cool with it now. The other thing too, I've learned later in life is that every human being is selfish. Everybody's selfish. Yeah. And when you say someone is unselfish, they're unselfish. Because that makes them feel happy, so they're still selfish. They're doing things to feel happy, to feel better about themselves. And I feel you better. Just blew my mind. I feel better when I have an opinion. I feel better when I'm honest with people about things. When I don't sugarcoat things, I, I'm feel I feel better about myself when I'm more upfront with people and I just tell it the way I feel. I think you read him pretty good. You're next. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, God. Hold your palm out, Zach. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, maybe he should hold he's his he's palm out. Right. I might have to pay him to say some good he's, stuff. He's, your lifeline. He stole are. some of my shine already, though. Um, you know, I'll, I'll early category. You know, my early category is a good guy. You know, and again, I mean, both you guys wouldn't be doing what you're doing if you weren't fun to be around and, and enjoy what you do. But um, just in the time we spent in the studio, um, you kind of took it away from me. You know, I feel like that. You had a confidence to say what you want to say, and 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 put it out there. And if you get a reaction, then the reaction was part of it. It wasn't malicious. It wasn't um, to be mean and hurtful. It was just straight up honesty. And and I have a job to do, and your job is to answer my question. And and it is what it is. I also think. Um, you're oh, sensitive as the well. Grin, the grin. I think you're sensitive as well. Oh. And I think, but I think I can, you can see it in your face as opposed to hear it through the radio. Um, you know, I think you don't get your feelings hurt, but deep down inside, you don't like to hurt people's feelings, and you don't want anybody to hurt your feelings. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hit you right in the face. You know, it, you may go back to the house and be like, "Man, that was that was messed up." You know, I had to go through that. I had to hmm. feel that. You know what? I do now that you mention it. I do as it pertains to people I work with, um, people that I um, that I have met <clears throat> personally. When it, when it pertains to like text line and Twitter and stuff like that, social media stuff like that, I think if I don't have a face attached, it doesn't bother me as much. But if I know you, if I've met you, and I've met listeners, so listeners count too. But if I've met you, or or if I work with you. You know, coworkers, Todd, you, um, you know, Buddy, Randy, like those are the ones where, yeah, you know, and, and they, uh, people have taken advantage in other markets of of my sensitivity towards them. But I don't like when people are mad at me. Yeah. People that I respect are mad at me. I yeah. hate it. Yeah, I hate it. So in that, in that respect, I am uber sensitive. Well, and for me too, I'm I'm, I'm in the same boat. For me personally, uh, the people that are closest to me are the people that can hurt me. Everyone else have they have no chance. You know, I can always shake it off, move on. You know, I went through a lot growing up, dealt with a lot of people. You know, had a lot of circumstances in my life that created this really hard exterior, and that's why my life is, you know, my my close personal life is is uh, is is private. You know, and people know that. And here I'm in the community a little bit more, so you see it. But my kids and everything about me and my family, I mean, it's it's it's, it's very private. Um, but I, when it comes to family. Those are the people that I can. I mean, I, I can't even fight it. Those are the people that can really hurt my feelings. Um, so they can I affect you. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they, they're, they're, those are the ones that can knock that wall down. All right, here's what I want down. you guys to do. I want you guys to look into that mirror, and I want you to say it with me. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm good enough. enough I'm, I'm smart, smart enough. enough and doggone dog it, it, people, people like, like me. me. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So last time we oh, were crazy it. serious on basketball, and now we're like digging deep. I know. I, I know. Hey, look, look. I, it's like I, it's like, like, like I always say. Like people, I, I, the I'm Mike telling Polar you. Show. I'm telling you, Des. Every time you come in here, uh, people, I, I don't ever hear. I have not heard. And Todd, you tell me if you've seen it. But I never hear anything negative from anyone, and it's and, and in radio, it's it, it is well, incredibly tough to get universal applause on anything. And no disrespect, Desmond, this obviously doesn't mean people think you don't know anything about basketball. But 
all the feedback we get is not about basketball. Yeah, yeah. When you come I, in, it's but about, that's. But I kind of yeah. enjoy that. I mean, at least we have we have well, guys think, that listen. I, to I, be honest with you, I think Desmond enjoys. Well, I mean, it. oh I'm, yeah, I'm, he, does the, he does the pregame I'm, shows I'm, I'm to talk deta- about yeah, basketball, I'm de- right? and I'm detaching basketball from my life and the standpoint of my career and what I do off the court. And so, uh, you know, basketball was a means to an end. It was it was an unbelievable vehicle, and I did it my whole entire life. And I, I'll do it as long as I can do it. You know, for fun, for free, and I would have did it for free anyway, but. You know, now that world for me is over. I can analyze the game, and I watch the games, and I love watching these young guys and these talented guys play. And I, I see the game differently than than a normal fan does. You know, I'm sitting watching all these other things. They're watching the ball go in the basket. I'm watching a lot of different sure. things. But um, that's not my life anymore. My life is is art and things outside of that, and being creative and and doing something and going in a different direction. So I love to, I love to talk about basketball. Don't get me wrong; I really enjoy it, and it's so easy for and me. And we will. I mean, and we always but, do. But I I like to you know we're we're like we're cracking up laughing yeah. in the morning, man. Yeah. Pe- and people are laughing with us. You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. In their cars, in their jobs, on the apps, they're laughing with us. We're all over the place. We're doing R and B music. We're telling stories. We're painting the studio, man. That's just. I have never listened to a show like this, and I'm not being biased. I just, I've never heard a show that has this many dynamics in the course of an hour. Well, and, and I I've, checks in the mail. Look, I, yeah, no get, doubt. <laughs> I've, I've always talked to my bosses about this. Like, and and look, they, God bless them because they have given me and you, Todd, a lot of leash. Far more. You need to realize this too. Far oh, more. No doubt. Far more than a lot of other places I've been. But um, I would like I know, and this is being completely vulnerable here. Okay with the listeners and you guys. I know that I am not the best thing to ever happen to sports radio. So I have got to Well, you to can't fi- be cuz I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I meant so to say I, he was confident. So I was, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cocky, cocky, borderline confident cocky. Yeah. Um so I've got to find a different way. And my different way is we got to laugh. We got to, you know, when when people come in here that are as eclectic as you, we got to let that eclectic uh, nature show. I mean, all that stuff, like you know, a tie. We're talking about a, we. If we, I, I ninety like uh, let me say eighty percent of the show is sports, but the other twenty percent, I think there's room for. And a lot of people, I've lost jobs because I disagree with people. Uh, I disagree with bosses on that regard, but. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, open up time here. All right. I, I want to ask you guys if the name Jarrell Martin means anything to you. No. Jarrell Martin plays for LSU, and over the weekend against Florida, it might have been mid last week actually, he went mm. in game mm-hmm. between the legs. I saw it. Oh yeah. On a dunk. That was nice. And that that that's a good transition. When I you. saw this, I thought I want to ask Desmond what was his best in game dunk that he ever had. Um, I did a 360 against San Antonio. Well, you know what I did? I got two. I, I'm going to have to say two because I think they're probably right even. I got a long pass, um, and I caught it off the bounce. I didn't catch it in dribble. It just I let it drop in front of me, and I just grabbed it. Um, I was in San Antonio, and as soon as I caught it, I don't know what I was thinking. I just went into a 360. I mean, I literally almost missed the rim. If you, like, my, it, if you see it, I was flying past the rim, reaching back. To dunk the ball, you know, it was, uh, and then there was another one against the Charlotte Bobcats. You where, said that's a 360, right? Yeah, 360. Okay. Yeah, Spurs 360, Spurs dunk. Okay, I'm just gonna try to yeah. find it. And then, um, was it playoffs? Uh, yes, it's a, yeah, okay, this might be it. Yeah, um, let's Sonics, see. I was with the Sonics. Yeah, this is it. I catch it right off the bounce. And Zach's going to oh. tweet out this video, too. <laughs> I'll tweet it out. Yeah, you almost did. You didn't know I, exactly I almost, where you were. I almost, missed, I almost missed a basket. My good. I mean, that was full extension uh, to get that through. That's a pretty sweet dunk. And then the other one was I was playing Charlotte Bobcats, and it was a baseline pass from Joe Smith. I took a dribble, and the guy went to come all over to help, but he saw that I was jumping. I don't care if he would have jumped or not. I was going to try it. And I did a, a, a windmill off the baseline, and it was right at the very end. And their coach got so upset because they were down by about 20. And I just called it and got stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Best game dunk. Young. <laughs> Zach, same question there for you. Go. Just tweet it. Yeah, same question for me. <laughs> <laughs> there was a uh, – I, I actually, you know, all of you guys, you don't know this or not, but I actually did go through my legs during a game. Did you once. watch the slam dunk right. contest, Desmond? I did. Okay. Who was it that did the – was it 540? It was the kid from Orlando. Oladipo. Yeah, yeah. Victor Oladipo. Zach – Came in the next day and goes, nah, it's not really a 540. Yeah. 
because he turned before he jumped his a little back bit. Was to the rim. I what, what what his, back, his back was, wasn't to the rim, but I give you, he was almost. He, but he, every he started, 360, he, he you start, start to turn before you jump for the uh, most part. Not right? everybody. Not not everybody. Like if you watch that, I mean, Vince has done some. Some other guys have done them as well. But I get where you're coming from. He he had about half of his body already turned before he jumped. Now, that doesn't negate the fact that he still had to get all the way around. Oh, it was beautiful. But it was at he, least a 360, like a true at least 360. There's a guy, if you go, if you YouTube it, there's a guy, and I, I don't think it's the helicopter, there's another guy, full 720. Oh, yeah, the N1 guy? Get yes, out of here. Yes, full 720. Oh, Incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can find I mean, it. He's, he's like a top. Just thing, Google man. 720 dunk. You'll see it. It's incredible. Uh, how hard is the reverse 360 like Vince Carter did? They're um, going like jumping and turning revert, the opposite, opposite way. direction. I can I can do it, but not as good as he did it. I, I mean, mean he, the crazy thing is he did it and windmill with a windmill. Yeah, that's, that's but you know that, that, he, But he's mo- probably more accustomed. Oh, that, yeah, oh my god, that's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it looks fa- it looks like a video game, it doesn't does. it? <laughs> seven twenty. Are you gonna tweet out seven twenty guy oh, too? That's ridiculous, man. As, as Zach, if that I, happened, I, I, in a I game, gotta look at that like a couple different times. True to make or sure. false? If that happened in a game, you'd be holding back guy on the bench. No, <laughs> yeah. you'd, no. you would. No, you'd be standing not. up with your arms no, out. No, that's the yes. thing we have. That, I don't know if I we've told you about this. Have, we, uh, have yeah. we? I can't stand holding back. Oh guy. man, like what are we holding the back? I'm from? gonna push that guy on the court and he get a tech. Yeah, <laughs> what are we, we, were, we were talking about Storm in the court earlier, and uh, and Gentleman Rancher tweeted it and said, uh, <laughs> he said, basically what y'all are saying, because we talked about how these players need some protection, Kansas players, they got stormed on last night mm-hmm. after they lost, and one of the guys caught a, <laughs> self called it a chicken wing, you know, he got himself an elbow like to the throat um, from wow. somebody that was, you know, that was stumbling onto the court, and I said, you know, we got to find some way to at least, you know, Let's rope off that sideline, you know, right as the buzzer sounds, or let's try to. And <laughs> gentleman rancher tweeted in and said, basically what y'all is saying is the world needs more holding back guys. <laughs> it's like I'm all for it. And he posted <laughs> he posted a picture of Sooners holding back guy talking, there. Look so at uh, yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I got look, four uh, people. But, but that guy right there, he's grabbing him, said, no, hold me back too. I want to be. Yeah, yeah, hold, hold me back. No, you hold me back. No, you hold me back. <laughs> I'm so garbage. Hold him back, guy. So Get out of here. All right. We come back. We're going to talk Russ MVP. And if there's any sort of validity, according to Desmond Mason, and before the end of the show today, Todd, we are going to come up with a rough estimate of what the true Madden NFL rating would be if Desmond Mason were a football player. And a new feature this hour that you've never heard before. That's right. On the Zach Desmond McCray doesn't show. even know. Featuring starring Todd Lisenby. Desmond nice. doesn't even know what it is. So we've got we all coming. You got all kinds of surprises. surprises. You're welcome. Surprises. Next. Trending now. All right, we are about 15 minutes away from a brand new segment. This is us uh, taking a swing, taking a big swing at a softball and seeing if we can knock it out of the park. We probably will whiff. It's okay. It's all right. So we good. give it a try. All good. Uh, can't believe we're letting you take a swing at a softball. You can't even dance in a nightclub without tearing your ACL. <laughs> we're going to let you try something else semi-athletic. Oh, my God. What's that movie? That guy's name was ACL Tab. <laughs> I can't remember what movie that was. I, uh, you, you're that guy I should have never told that story. <laughs> you're that guy. All right. <laughs> That's why I played lean back for you. That's all you can do at the nightclub anymore is just lean back. How would Desmond Mason rate in Madden? This is from 538.com. They have an interactive feature. They have taken all of the combine statistics, okay, from uh, from NFL players, guys that ended up being drafted, and they compared them with their initial rating on the Madden game, Todd. And that's how they come up with their initial rating. So they took all those formulas – and now they let you do it on your own. So we did this with Des during the break. Now he doesn't know what he were, we would run a forty yard dash in. What do you think, Todd? What do you think Des would run a forty in? Um. And let's be conservative just for fun here. I mean, under five, right? Yeah, I said four seven. I'd go four nine. Okay. We'll put him at four nine. How tall? How tall is? Uh, how much does Jameis Winston weigh? And how tall is he? 
Oh, uh, that's. I mean, a, I'd say they're pretty close to the same body size, right? No, You're a little th- taller no, than Winston. I, th- I think I think Des is skinnier. You know, I'm 6'6", 238, 240. Jameis right Winston here. is six four, and doesn't have his weight here yet. Hang on. He, I would say I would say four eight four nine somewhere in that. He's range. six four two thirty one. What are you? I'm two thirty eight. Okay, so you all are. I, I figured you were skinnier. All right, so six four two thirty one. What just happened is Zach just called you fat, Desmond. Huh. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's okay, right. it happened. He yeah. calls me fat yeah. every day, so yeah. we're good. All right, so you so you'd run a four nine fat ass. So here you go. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, strength, strength. Now I asked him how many times he could bench press 225 pounds like they do at the combine uh des said 15 uh jumping and we did this at at the height of his career okay jumping his vertical leap <laughs> so we're gonna do my 49 40 we're gonna do everything else to height of my career and do my yeah well let's do it now yeah let's do it let's do it from your career your well, career i was, was faster than 49 we'll give you sure. four six let's give you four six what about bench 225 uh, pounds yeah that's probably about right 15 yeah okay uh vertical leap you want to guess his vertical leap at his height, Todd? His vertical leap, Desmond Mason's, at his height. At his height of his career. 41. <laughs> Higher? <laughs> he just, Desmond shook his head in disgust. 46. There you go. 46. 46 inches. Throwing, he had to kind of guesstimate. He was a quarterback in, in high school, but um, he guessed that he could throw a football 50 yards. That's probably, I mean, that's that's a conservative estimate, I would guess. Zach, what was your vertical at your height? Right under 46. <laughs> right around 20. My, if you move the decimal over one, that might have been yeah. mine. 4.6. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Move the decimal point. That, that's probably mine, hey, too. Look, I could, <laughs> standing on both feet underneath the basket, I can get the net. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being proud, like, as a senior in high school, I didn't have to, like, jump like I could actually jump shoot I think I was a junior in high school like I could actually jump shoot like I didn't have to have to do a set shot I was first dunk in a game seventh grade <laughs> that's not even fair seventh I hate grade. You. get out of here into my seventh grade year so according to Madden his speed Todd he would have he would be an 85 his strength he would be a 61 his throwing he would be a 74. And his jumping, he would be a 100. Um, what's funny is, with the exception of jumping, every other one of his uh, of his traits would be uh, actually not speed anymore because we moved that up, but would be close to a quarterback. Jumping, they have his closest position being a wide receiver. But anyway, that's it. I don't. I'm gonna know- go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna say mine matches closest with the lineman. Yes, mine too. What's funny is I would, I think I would have a tough time breaking a seven-second forty-yard dash. This is it only goes up to seven, so we're kind of screwed. There. Yeah, I think I'm maxed out on that too. But uh, w- I think which, I just have trouble completing a forty-yard dash, which would put us at a zero. <laughs> to be honest with you, it would put us, Todd, me, and you at a zero on speed. Uh, the one time I, I ran put a me, I think dash. I put I put seven as as the t- number of times I could bench two hundred twenty five pounds. It might be six or five. I played one year in the in NAIA college football, and we timed the forty one time. It's the only time in my life I've ever been timed in the forty, and I ran a five eight. Oh yeah, you're not running. A and there's no way I'm running a five eight. That happening. was also about one hundred twenty pounds ago too. Jumping, I'm going to put me at about a fifteen, maybe. <laughs> Throwing, I actually know that. Throwing, I can throw the ball in the air right at it about 50 yards. So I would be at zero in speed, 32 in strength, 47 in jumping, and a 73 in throwing. Anyway, there we go. Um, So Russell Westbrook, transition here on 107.7 The Franchise. They're trying to get me to reset more. Running back, receiver. Westbrook, Russell, probably receiver at yeah, six four, right? Six four would be receiver. I don't know. I see him coming out of the backfield with like a uh, just a big, you know, just full head of steam. I see Maybe Russell a tight end. I see Russell being a defensive player. To be honest with you, with that attitude he has, yeah. I'd imagine he want to hit some people. Mm-hmm. Strong safety. There you go. That's it. Yeah, he would come down. He he could be the eighth man in the box and just 
wail on people? Dude, we just red throw, just red zone that kid and throw it in the corner and throw it high. Nobody, know, nobody's, going up, nobody's going up there to get that with him. Too athletic. It'd be funny to watch Kevin Durant as a wide receiver, seven foot tall. Like, <laughs> we're just yeah. going to throw it up. That'd uh, be all good until you come across the middle and get tangled up. Well, come across we, on a slant. We would not let that, him go over the middle. That, can you come across a slant and catch that ball and doesn't see one of those little boys come around and yeah. wreck his legs? No, we are not letting him go over the middle. <laughs> um, what do you make of the foot injury first? Like, do you, um, like, I was saying yesterday on the show that, like, it sounds like this isn't going to be too long of a problem here in the short term. But I've just got it in my head that if you're seven foot tall and you got foot problems, that they're probably going to be a career long problem in some way, shape, or form. Do you think so? Or I, I, I just want to say this to KD if he's having foot problems. I feel bad for him, son. I got 99 problems, but a foot ain't one. Oh, just wanted to get that out there. <laughs> that was so corny. That was, that You're welcome. That was, that was terrible. <laughs> I mean, and it's outdated. I, I mean, come on. Come on. Nights and weekends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so oh, is it, it is, you know, am I making too much of that? Um, you know, you, you've seen a history of foot problems with big guys. I mean, they've always lingered, but you hadn't seen them with a guy like Kevin. You know, like a his his position, his play, and his style of play. You always see it with, you know, big centers and big power forwards. But um, f- then those feet, man, it's just they're bad news. It's feet, back, hips. Everybody knows that those are just bad knees. Those are bad news spots. And so I, f- I feel bad for him as well, Todd. Are your feet um, bad? No, I, I mean I've never outside of the hyperextension I had when I was here with the Hornets. The first, I mean, Thunder the first year. I've never had any major surgeries, any major injuries. I was just very fortunate in my career. Um, but man, you had uh, a knee, didn't you? Yeah, it was hi- I got hyperextended. Someone fell back into. Oh, it okay. Got- I think he's got two knees. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> we, I do do that really. Like, yeah, well, he's got an ankle. <laughs> well, yeah, of course he's got an ankle. Yeah, he's got two. Did of them. you did you play with anybody that had lingering foot issues? Last yeah, Jerome career? James. Jerome James was one. Vin Baker had him as well. But they were that's why I said they were all big centers and, and you know, big guys. And so Kevin's a big guy, but he's a perimeter guy. So it's uh you know, I don't know. I, I just I feel bad. I, I he's young and, you know, he's at the height of his career and um, you know, and he's a he's a competitor, so it's it stinks to see him having to deal with this. You think that makes it tougher that he's a perimeter guy? Um well, it does because he's always pushing off on it from a lateral standpoint. And but he's he doesn't have the weight that's kind of constantly piling on it either. Right. So, you know, I, I can honestly say I don't know which one is worse, whether it be the big guys that are a little bit heavier that are jumping and fighting down there in the pain, or the permanent guys who are a little lighter but more agile and have to move laterally much more than the bigs. All right, we come back. I want to do? Uh, I want to get him started on his painting, and I'll ask him Westbrook for MVP. And we're gonna play our uh, we're gonna play our brand new game. Very excited. Very excited. It's all coming up. Here we go. Look at him. He's like, it's, it's, here we it's, go. It, it, now he does. Oh, also, some, I saw some breaking entertainment news that pertains to this show as well okay. that we'll talk about. La- I get label label me intrigued. All right. All next. Todd, uh, somebody during the break tweeted out. I don't know if this guy created it or not, but tweeted it out to us. It's an OSU fan. I'm looking at his Twitter profile right now. Uh, Rob, thank you, Rob. It's a uh, appreciate that, Rob. YouTube video. It's a Desmond Mason mix, and you will not believe the song it is mixed to. It's a dunk. Basically, it's an all dunk mix of Desmond. It is mixed to the song "No Dignity" by Blackstreet. I almost feel like this guy had to do it on purpose. <laughs> like he had to do it based on our show. What's this entertainment news? I don't guess it's technically entertainment, but. One of the first times we got Desmond to really open up with us, Zach, was you asked him. Yeah, we really started to crack that nut, didn't we? (laughs) Yeah, that's when things started to get kind of crazy right here. You asked him, uh, you said, what would you do if you found out you were dating a transsexual? Yep. Because there was a story about Michael Phelps dating a transsexual. Yep. Michael Phelps now engaged to, I believe, not a transsexual. Now, wait a minute. Lots of questions here. Number one, um, when, when did this? When did the transgender thing happen? 
Did that have like it was did, a woman he met on Tinder, wasn't it? Yeah, but did that happen right away? Like whenever we found out and we broke it because we talked about no, it. No, like, I think the woman had said, "I'm Michael Phelps' girlfriend," and I think Phelps blasted. had just broken up with her. Is why she came out. Yeah, she blasted. Yeah, but that was like. It was like a, I mean, it was less than a year ago, right? Oh I mean, yeah, it was, it was like three months ago. Yeah, and now he's ma- like, that's he's what I'm engaged, talking about. Yeah. The timing does not seem right, correct? <laughs> like three months, you gotta be kidding. It sounds to me like maybe the uh, uh, PR I don't stunt. Know. I don't PR know the, stunt. I can't remember the name of the uh, the transsexual. We'll just call her Tranny Ramirez. It seems like maybe <laughs> that, that <laughs> Tranny Ramirez was a side piece. <laughs> True. The side piece. Oh, so we can call her Trainee Pacquiao. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Uh, you, uh, you oh, totally Trainee Ainge. He's if you want to call her Trainee Ainge, <laughs> he's, he's the only one right now. He is. Hey, you should. We need to get down. out the rim shot, bro. Hey, you, need to, you need to write those down. <laughs> Trainee Ainge. <laughs> Trainee Manning. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pop me up, pop me up here, like, like this, oh, right? So no, yeah. Just go through them all. Go ahead, Tra- one at a time. Trainee Ramirez, uh, Trainee Pacquiao, Trainee Ainge, Trainee Manning. <laughs> all right. Um, Trainee Devito. Trainee Devito, I like it. <laughs> all right. So um, anyway. Where were we? That was so bad. That can't, like, first three months, <laughs> we got to stop that. Like, that. this is a PR stunt, isn't it? <clears throat> Man, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, you do. I, I don't if I, if I knew yeah, I would you tell you. Do. I have no idea. I just, it is quick, though. It is, it's quite swift. And, it is swift. <laughs> it is quite swift. Um, all right, so. Tranny Des- Glover. <laughs> Tranny Woodhead. <laughs> Oh my God! Trainee so Amendola. <laughs> <laughs> that is not. I mean, what are we doing? Oh what are we doing? All right. Well, so Westbrook for MVP. <clears throat> you know what? It's uh, with the way he's playing, you can definitely um, you can make that case. You know, but at the end of the day, I think Oklahoma City still has to move further up in the playoffs. You know, for him to get that MVP. How would how how far up do you have to go in that spot? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. No, you're right. I, I think if they got up to five, you know, if they got up to five, he but the odds of him getting to five was oh, slim yeah. to none. That's so, very very. Um, but if they got up to five, then I think he could. They would give it to him. You know, for sure, because he's he's deserving of, it, especially the way he's playing now. But you know, it's it's about that as well. You got to think about it. You know, you got Golden State and you got Steph Curry. You know, you got. Uh, Memphis, and you got P- P- uh, Mark Gasol and, and Zach Randolph, and you know you got some players that that are playing uh, really well, and, and you know it's it's hard. It's hard. Trainee Bonaducci. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this game. All right, so let's uh, let's fire it up here. We have not told Desmond what we're doing here. Um, this is going to be. I have a feeling that this is going to totally bomb, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, we're we're all about uh, giving it a try. Dez is working on his project over here. This is painting number two of 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 Dez's uh, painting studio series. Yeah. So uh, he's got it going on over here. He's got a wood panel. He's got this one on. But anyway, fire up our crappy imaging here. Let's I tell it. you what, man. Sometimes you just got to let the people know something random. I like to eat ice cream, and I really enjoy a nice pair of slacks. I tell you what, man. Bill Belichick looks a lot like my brother. Hey, man, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I don't like the Lord of the Rings. Like, OMG, that's so random. It's time for I'll Tell You What, Man. Todd, maybe we should just not explain it and just do it. And we can ask once the texters start to figure it out and the Twitter peeps, the tweeps. Once they start to figure it out, like, they can just come in with their own, I tell you what, man. So, uh, would you like to Would you like to get her started here? I'll tell you what, man. The s'mores Pop-Tarts are the only ones that are good hot. <laughs> I like this game I already. disagree. I disagree <laughs> with that completely. <laughs> Strawberry. Like, that's perfect. It burns the icing. It burns the icing no, on the No, it doesn't burn it. It melts it. Nope. 
<laughs> said, That's nope. terrible. <laughs> nope. He just totally just denied your statement. He, he, he kind of did, didn't he? I got to tell you what, man. Go ahead. You got to start it with, I, I tell you what, man. Okay, I tell you what, man. Man buns on your head suck. Guys that wear man buns. On the man top of buns? Man What's buns. a man bun? It's guys that have long hair. They the put their hair in the bun. Kind? Yes. yes. Oh. That is the worst ever. Oh, where they actually Spencer put Spencer Hawes the... does that, I think. Doesn't he have a man yeah, bun? Yeah, I think he does. And they always yeah. do it with the big beard. You got to have a big beard to do it, too. Huh. It's the dumbest hairstyle ever. I tell you what, man. I have never tried Nutella. I tell you what, man, you're missing out. I tell you what, man, you're missing out. <laughs> it's the bomb. We're bringing some Nutella in on Thursday. Yes, we are. In your white we'll shirt. We'll have a, uh, yeah, we'll have a studio testing of Nutella. All right. Um, what is your I tell you what, man? What is your I tell you what, man? Eight eight four seven four. So basically, we just said say something random. No, but seriously, you have to believe it. I, the I tell you what, man, 88474, type in the word text, then a space, then your I tell you what, man, and tweet it at us, at Big Easy, at Todd on Franchise, at D Mason Art. Even Big Voice Guy wants to get in on this. Big Voice Guy wants to get on this. Here we go. I'll tell you what, man, sometimes the best part of giving presents out during the holidays is wrapping the presents. All right. There yeah, I, don't you know go. About that. Yeah, I, I, just, I just realized all of mine are food related. Like, I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> Frying the egg is the only way to truly honor the egg. <laughs> Scrambled, poached, boiled, that's weak. You've got to fry the well, egg. You're fry- well, you're frying. Wait a minute. Those are all frying? No way. Why don't you scramble it? You're still frying it. Yeah, but you're, you're taking away the, inter- the inter- integrity. The integrity. Yeah. Yes. Get it out, Mason. You got to keep have, the yolk together. To the yolk, yeah, the yes. yolk has to stay together. The runny it's gotta yolk. Be, it's got to be part of it. Mm-hmm. They're separate things. Uh... So what? What are I'm we? I'm all for egg segregation. The yolk and the white <laughs> <laughs> do not need to be mixed uh, together. You don't like scramble. integration. <laughs> no. Todd, egg integration. start the tweet. Start everybody. You all get, get the him. tweet going. Get him. Todd is anti-integration. <laughs> I'm George C. Wallace of eggs. <laughs> I do not like integrating the yolk oh and the white. My God. <laughs> uh, oh my God. That was good. Todd is on a roll He's today. On a roll Look today. at him. Give him some butter. He's that, on a roll. That is. Uh, that's pretty good. I tell you what, man. Was I the only one that noticed at the Oscars that they made up for not having any black nominees by having Common and John Legend win the award <laughs> <laughs> for best song? <laughs> now let's be honest. Uh, that was a come total on. Makeup. That that was, hey, you have makeup calls in basketball that and was football. A call. That was a makeup call by the academy. <laughs> That's not true. It I, was. I refuse to believe that. Oh, man. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, now, people that? people have, have uh, chimed in with their I tell you what, mans. Uh, <clears throat> Bob on Twitter. I tell you what, man. Star Wars, new and old, are overrated. Yes. Well played, Bob. I have never seen one Star Wars. Me I've, neither. I've seen actually, some. I saw about thirty minutes Overrated? of uh, the first yeah. one. I fell asleep. Yeah, it's, yeah I think don't so let David too. Garrett hear you. <laughs> David Garrett's a big, a big Star, Star Wars fan. nerd. James on Twitter. I tell you what, man. Pop tarts are the best with some butter on the top and bottom Ooh, after toasting. Wow, that is a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. Don't we have enough crap on it? <laughs> That's exactly right. Right? We I can mean, try that when we bring in the Nutella. We'll try Pop-Tarts with Nutella on them if we have to. Okay. I bet it's good. Uh, Sean on Twitter. I tell you what, man. Moving the uh, Qatar 2022 World Cup to November slash December is about the worst decision FIFA could make. It is. No, it it's falls not. right in the middle of all the European leagues. Oh. Okay. I, I understand why point. they did it. Giving it to Qatar was the dumb decision. Not moving it to the winter time. On the text line. Brandon Brandon tweets in, I'll tell you what, man, nobody wants to be with Tranny Manning. Which I, I wouldn't say nobody. I mean Greg Anthony did, right? Oh. <laughs> but didn't he? 
I mean, didn't that come out? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's that's terrible. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> Greg Anthony. Um, oh my god! Uh, people are retweeting your quote, Todd. I am the George C. Wallace of eggs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got one. It's, it's Go one ahead. I tell you what, man. Hasim to beat has the ugliest run in the NBA. Ooh. Yeah, I can't think of anybody the way else. He, you're saying the way he runs. The way he runs up and down the court. Are you happy now? It's like now he's spraining that, uh, his ankle every step. What do you think? Runs like, <laughs> like number two? Like, what do you think? <laughs> Come so, on, Todd. So gross. You guys killed my appetite. No, no, no. I meant... <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant like, you know, a guy's got... Isn't it like a guy's got good run means that was he played well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah I, thought, that's I thought that's exactly what you meant. Exactly good whatever. save. Good save. Um... Are you happy, Des, that Ennis Cantor's wearing number 34 and Hashim Tabit's out of it? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I actually covered my eyes every time he checked in the game. Oh. So you covered your eyes twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're saying. <laughs> this guy, I tell you what, man, Todd is on the roll today. No doubt. Um. I tell you what, this from the text line. I tell you what, man, there's a lot of snow outside. There is a lot of snow outside. Yeah, yeah. No, there, there's a lot of snow. That guy, I got a truck, and I was even kind of, it must be a little bit of a wuss truck, I guess, but I was even <laughs> slipping around a little bit. This must be a wuss um, truck. Tranny Treo. <laughs> I tell you what, man, this is from the text line. Edible underwear tastes like butt. Because I could see that. It. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> it might be the under. It might be what's under the edible underwear, brother. That's, uh, you know, that could be a problem. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Did you guys see the special about Amari Stoudemire bathing in wine? Yes. I'd what? like to try yes. that. Yes. Have you seen this? No. I'd like yes, to try that. Yes, in wine. He but with bathed. Fireball. <laughs> That's going to burn you up. Yeah, no, your skin, come on. Your skin is not going to. Your skin? I don't think it's going to work. What about well, the rest can, of you? We can cut it with some water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you're, you're going to smell like a fireball for the rest of your and life. You're going to okay. feel like a fireball. Yeah. In your lower extremities. No, no, no. <laughs> I think it's safe. Yeah, that's not safe. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. He does bathe in red wine, though. He bathes in red wine. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, e2 Brute. Oh. That's, oh. rid- that's ridiculous. So, what, he just pours bottles and bottles and magnums in his bathtub? I'll tell you what, man. I guess. I, I, for a I, grand, I would picture. drink a glass of that wine that he bathed in. Just for a th- grand. I tell you what, man, that's oh, gross. I mean, What's you just what down it. Guy? Just go yeah, for it. You got to stop this, Todd. It's one grand. <laughs> you know, wouldn't do that for a grand? You drink another man's wine bath? He bathed in it. <laughs> no. He, he promised me that there was no uh, going to the restroom in the tub. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> you what, know, what, wait, you wait might as well be Michael Phelps. It's a thousand bucks. <laughs> All right. For well, a how, thousand what bucks. do I have to make? Yeah. the? Pro- could it, would you do a thousand for bath water? No, no, he said he'd drink bath wine. wine. No, I, bath know, wine I know, but, bath, I know, well, but at least let's do bath water. A little bit. Bath water, you got to get up around the 5,000 range. I don't think so. You gotta, you I bet you. If I'm you, talking if about like a wine glass that much is bath water. I understand. Water, I understand. I and my, it and my, what I'm trying to say is that you have already, <sighs> you've already opened up your soul by <sighs> saying the bath wine, you would drink it. You would do it the exact same thing for bath water. The exact, you would do it for a grand like that. Scarlett Johansson would be like 10, 15 bucks. We know to be free. Oh my God! Um, Amari Stoudemire wine yep, bath. Yep. You thought I was kidding, didn't you? That is gross. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is gross. All right, final ones on the text line. I, I tell you what, man, that guy dissing Star Wars is an ass. <laughs> Uh, Star Wars people are more hardcore than Russell Westbrook fans. I mean, you yes. rip Star Wars. Yes. Another Ooh. texter. I tell you what, man. I usually go number one when I go number two. Right, well, I think we're all. I think we're probably we're all guilty of that, right? <laughs> just uh, Jared on Twitter. I tell you what, man. Tranny Jenner is just too easy. <laughs> That's so bad. I don't think he gets the joke. Yeah, but. it's got to be Danny or Manny, yeah. or yeah. like you could do Tranny Oakley. Huh? Tranny Annie Oakley. Oh, oh Annie, Annie Oakley. Oakley. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> well, we should probably wrap it up. <laughs> this is what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We I start can... to float. 
Yeah, I mean, I would really, I'd be fine doing this a whole other hour, yeah, but we should it. probably go. We should probably go. You know, this is going to head in a bad direction. Yeah, so. we should. Uh, for the ADD crowd, they're probably like, okay, okay, move right along, please. <laughs> We're talking about drinking bath wine. <laughs> then move right along, please. Todd, that is gross. That's hey, terrible. I'll tell you what, man. This segment's all about being honest. Oh, that's gosh. right. It is. It, it is, is the best policy. It is. Honesty in this in this particular segment is required. What's that aftertaste like? Ugh. All right, now it's time to go. <laughs> if it's Amari Stoudemire's bath, it's failure. That, now, <laughs> it's, now it's time to go. Now it is time to go. I love the salt All right, we got to go. Uh, thank you, Dez. Oh, my gosh. We appreciate everything you brought to the table. You Todd, you are things. suspended for... <laughs> the management's saying you're suspended for a week. I'm going to go have a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll I think Kelly Gregg's in no. a wine bath right now. Oh, God. that's two Stop. grand, by the way, for Kelly Gregg. Stop! Stop! <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll talk thunder. Des, thank you very much. Oh man, you did got you get crazy. anything done? I did. I got two little squares done All on right. my painting. Two little squares <laughs> on a big thirty by thirty piece of wood. You got two little squares done. All right, we'll talk more thunder next.